Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be picking up where we left off in the last video, which allowed for us to cultivate a quick data set in this notebook right here. What we're going to be focusing on this video is how to take the data that we cultivated for potential training data and start annotating it. Now there's a lot of different resources out there for annotating data. Some of them are free, some of them are in the cloud, some of them are local, some of them are paid. What we're going to be using in this video is Prodigy. Now Prodigy is a paid local annotation software that comes from Explosion AI, the same people who make Spacey. And the reason why this is not uh, paid by Prodigy in any way, the reason why I'm using Prodigy in this video is because it is built to work specifically natively with Prodigy. And it makes a lot of the hiccups that can occur when taking data from an annotation software and bringing it into your machine learning framework, it makes a lot of those steps easier because things you don't have to do are things like token alignment, uh, character alignment, things that might be an issue if you're trying to train a machine learning model. And the reason for this is because Prodigy's token alignment aligns perfectly with the spacey format, which means you can easily take data from Prodigy and use it in a spacey Spacey training pipeline. Most importantly for this video, it makes for people who are newer to machine learning and newer to NLP, it makes the process of training a model a lot easier. And the reason for this is because of things like what we can see here on the left. Prodigy lets you annotate data fairly easily with some built-in what they call recipes. We'll talk about that in a second. But what it also does is it has recipes that allow for you to easily train models with very limited knowledge about machine learning or about natural language processing or even spacey in general. Meaning you can have a basic understanding of spacey, meaning you just know how to load up a pipeline. If you have that, then you can use Prodigy to not only annotate data, but in one line in the terminal, train a spacey model and use it. Now, having an understanding of machine learning is really useful because Prodigy and especially Spacey 3.0 uh, allow for you to have a lot of control over the parameters of your model, model, the architecture of it, the base models that are used. However, if you don't have any of that knowledge and you have enough good annotated data, you can get a basically good model up and running very quickly. And as we're gonna see in this video, our focus is not to produce a state-of-the-art model. Our focus today in this video is to build a model that is good enough to be used in the annotation process to build what we would call a gold standard data set, or data that has been manually validated and manually cultivated. But we can use a model in the loop to make the annotation process very, very quick. And as we're gonna see in this video, with really only 10 or 20 examples, we can actually have a baseline model that's not great, but still useful in this process, up and running in about 10 to 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. How are we going to use Prodigy? Well, in order to use Prodigy, we need to take the data that we cultivated in the last video, which looks like this, a JSONL file, and this has really just one piece of, uh, one key in here, it's the text, the thing that we want to annotate. And if you remember, we've got in this text, we have things that we are trying to capture. In this case, a collection of citations in each of these examples. So each of these things has what we would call a citation or a collection of references. These are always gonna be found or typically going to be found in parentheses. They have multiple what we would call references. These are things like journals that might be cited. These are the things that we want to extract. But within each of these, we've got things like the journal title, in this case, RDM, and the journal uh, year or volume. This is usually going to be a date that corresponds to when this uh, periodical was published. This allows for us to, to essentially want to capture four different pieces of data. The parenthetical citation, each individual reference found within that citation, and each, vol uh, each periodical and each volume for each of those references. So our goal in using span classification is to capture all of these. What we're gonna focus on right now is taking the data from this format and loading it up into Prodigy so that by the end of this video, we can start annotating it and training our first model in the next video. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna do this for right now in a notebook that's going to eventually look like this, but we're gonna walk through and do this in real time with a new notebook here. So what are Prodigy recipes? Prodigy recipes are built in things for the Prodigy library that allow for you to go ahead and essentially in one line of code, take data, load it up and have a 
annotation framework that lets you go through and annotate it in some kind of controlled way. Now there's a lot of different things that Prodigy has, and I'm not gonna get into all those in this video. If you want to see a video on Prodigy, I don't have anything on this channel that covers it in depth, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll go through and do that. The reason why I'm not spending too much time on this is because not all the viewers are gonna be using Prodigy. Nevertheless, the steps that we see in this video are going to be applicable regardless of the annotation software that you use. So you can use things like Docano, which are free, uh, open source, and designed to be local and have multiple users. You can use Prodigy, you can use a Label Studio, anything in the cloud that lets you essentially annotate uh, what we would call nested spans or things that have uh, need to have multiple labels assigned at the token level. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this Prodigy recipe that we have, and I'll have a link to this recipe in the uh, description down below, and we're going to start writing out what we're going to use in the terminal, which we're going to get to in just a second. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say python-m. This is going to be necessary if you're using things like Windows, or I believe Mac as well requires you to do this. If you're using Mac, you're going to have Python uh, 2 installed by default. You may need to do Python 3 here. Uh, but I'm on Windows right now, so I'm going to be just doing just Python. The next thing I'm going to do is dash m, and then I'm going to spe specify that what I want to work with is the Prodigy library. Now this means that I'm essentially going to be going into the Prodigy library and pulling out some Python um, scripts here. In this case, I'm going to grab spans.manual. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the data set, the thing that I want to call it. Now it's important to understand Prodigy saves all your annotations in a SQL database. This makes it very quick to, to load lots of data and access it pretty quickly. This has some limitations I'm not going to get into in this video, but overall this is a great way to quickly start annotating some data for a spacey framework or a spacey workflow. So the dataset name is going to be the name of the file in the SQL database. It's important to remember this because you're going to have to use this multiple times as you work through and annotate more data from this collection. So for this video, I'm going to call this YouTube underscore SpanCat. Just a simple name. Name this whatever that you like. The next thing is I have to say the spacey model. Now for right now, we don't have a model trained, so I'm just gonna be working with the basic standard blank English pipeline. And this is going to basically allow for me to just tokenize my data uh, with the expectation that my data is in English, which it actually is. So I'm gonna say blank colon, very important there, en. So this is saying call up the blank English model. The next thing that I need to do is I need to specify the source. Now the source here is going to be your actual data that you want to annotate. In other words, the data that we cultivated in the last video. For me, this is going to be this data right here. This file is located in this repository in the data subfolder. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. It's focus underscore input dot json l. And I'm going to minimize this so we can see what's going on a bit better. So that's gonna be where the data is actually found, and it's actually found in data. There we are. And then the next thing that I have to specify here are the labels. These are gonna be the things that I want to essentially annotate in Prodigy. This is very important here. You're going to need to be consistent as you train multiple models going forward because these need to be the same. And this is why I'm doing this in a text file. Really, you should be using this as a, as a, in a bash file, but I don't expect the audience to all have that. So for right now, we're just gonna be copying and pasting what we have in a text file and putting it into our terminal in just a second. So for this, we're gonna have dash dash label. This is gonna be the keyword argument here, and this is gonna be followed by a space. Now what we need here are a list of the labels that we want to use. I'm gonna be using some abbreviations here. So the first thing that I wanna have is what I would call a, a citations. So C-I-T-S is what I'm going to use. I'm gonna have a comma. This is gonna be no space followed by another label, in this case, reference. Reference are gonna be each of the periodical references. The next thing is gonna be the actual um, uh, periodical. So I'm just gonna call this PER for periodical. And then the final thing will be the VOL for volume. Now that I have all of this ready, it's time to copy and paste this into our terminal so that we can begin finally annotating. Now I already have my terminal pulled up. It's important here that you have Prodigy installed. Again, I'm not going to explain all the intricacies of Prodigy. If you wanna know about it, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to include that. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to run this exact command by pasting it in. Now I already have the newest version of Prodigy installed here. Uh, it's not so much important which version of Prodigy you have, so as long as it has the spans cat uh, ready, which I can't remember the exact volume. I'll be sure to include that in the description down below. If we hit enter, what we're going to see is eventually Prodigy take our data, load everything up, and prepare it. Now, if you notice right here, it tells me that we've started a web server at localhost 8080. Now, I can 
click this and it'll open up a Prodigy server for us. This is gonna be how we annotate our data. Now notice here that I have an example that has no citations in it. Remember in the last video, it's very important to have both positive examples, in other words, examples that uh, contain things that you want to annotate, but also negative examples. It's very important for models to see both of these. I'm gonna go ahead and use this interface to hit the green checkbox or accept. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit. Our next example, we have some actual data that we can begin annotating. And so what I have here is the option to annotate four different things. One, two, three, and four, we see them all up there. I'm gonna select CITS for my citations, and I'm gonna highlight all of this because these are gonna be the things found within the parentheses. Now it's very important when annotating to be consistent. Notice that I'm not grabbing the open and the closed parentheses. That's just a personal choice. I absolutely could annotate these. What it's important, however, not to uh, vary in how you do it. So set parameters and be consistent. If this is your first time annotating, you're going to mess up. You're gonna accidentally grab tokens you're not supposed to. That's okay. When you're first annotating, it's gonna be a long period of time because it's gonna be trial and error. Um, as you annotate, you might think of uh, new labels that you want to include. Maybe you want to refine how you're doing things and that's perfectly normal. It happens on every project. I have already thought about this. And I know this is how I want to do it. The next thing I want to annotate is this right here, a individual, uh, sorry, uh, an individual reference. Now this reference here is gonna have two volumes and one periodical. So I can go ahead and select one periodical and I'm gonna highlight each of these which are individual volumes. So this is one periodical that's been referenced essentially twice. And then I'm gonna hit the green checkbox to accept that. And I'm gonna go through and do this for probably about 15 or 20 different references that I can find, and then we're gonna train our first model. So I'm gonna pop back once this is all done and go ahead and show you how to train the next model in the next video. Hopefully you've at least found this interesting for some of the basic methodological ways of getting started with Prodigy and maybe annotating some data and some of the thoughts that go into it. Uh, again, be consistent with your annotation process and once we have that down, pop over to the next video and we'll see how to take the data from something like Prodigy and train a first model so that you can begin annotating data more quickly as you go forward. And that's gonna be our focus in the next video. Thanks for listening.